the beginning of sorrows. So says Matthew 24 and verse 7 and verse 8. Also, another article from the Associated Press, May the 11th. This one mentions that uh, in Vicksburg, Mississippi, the river was uh, projected to peak Saturday just above the record set during the cataclysmic Great Flood of 1927. Vicksburg was forecast to see its highest river level ever, slightly above the 56.2 feet mark set in 1927. Farther south in Natchez, the forecasters said the 1937 record could be shattered by four feet on Saturday. Another record shattered. The Mississippi crested in Memphis at nearly 48 feet, just short of its all-time record of 48.7. So what is going on? What is happening? Why is this happening in America? Now, here comes the pestilence, one form of it anyhow. Snakes and other creatures slithered in the foul water, and officials warned of bacteria, of course, and other diseases that will uh, be attendant to all these problems. And it concludes, it doesn't matter, we've already lost everything, said Rocio Rodriguez, 24, who has been at a shelter for 12 days with her husband and two young children since their trailer park flooded. They've lost everything. People are suffering, and there is a lot of pain involved in this, a lot of suffering. And I'll read to you as much as I can if you'll bear with me because I think you need to understand that these are prophecies being fulfilled, but it has the most wonderful ending you can even fathom in your mind. Here's uh, the, the Reuters, May 10th, 2011. Once in a lifetime flood submerges farmland. Nearly three million acres of farmland in three southern U.S. states have been submerged by floodwaters from the raging Mississippi River and smaller tributaries, adding to the troubles in seeding this year's crops in the world's top grain exporter. Well, you can see how that's going to affect not only us, but the entire world. One person said, I've never seen anything like this. I've been farming for 31 years. This is one, the once-in-a-lifetime flood, said uh, Joe Christian. A farmer, of course, and then uh, farmers across the region will be facing similar dilemmas in the coming weeks as many have already sold a portion of their crops to lock in record or near record prices. See, that's, that's that shortage of food. That's famine. Uh, you'll notice this as you walk into your grocery stores. You'll see the prices are going to be much bigger as these shortages occur. And frankly, as the dollar is diminished in value. Another one talks about uh, they've, they've never had this type of water in the whole system. And of course, we, as I said, Australia has had, a, uh, had the worst floods, some of the worst floods they've ever experienced. Canada has also been afflicted. And now how about drought? Uh, because this is a, a specific fulfillment of a prophecy I'll show you in a moment. This is from uh, sweet101.com. May 2nd, by uh, Darla Sue Dolman, the Texas firefighters who have fought more than 6,900 fires since January in historic drought conditions. Historic drought conditions. Uh, Texas is suffering from historic drought and wind conditions that have not been seen since 1895, according to Holly Huffman, spokesman for the Texas Forest Service. The situation in Texas has moved from severe to critical. This is the worst season we have ever seen. And at times, we were literally burning border to border. I've never seen anything like it. According to Lewis Kearney, public information officers for the Texas Forest Service, since January 2011, Texas has lost 2,196,084 acres to 6,993 wildfires. Texans have lost 1,134 structures to these fires, including barns, houses, and other outbuildings, Kearney said. So it just goes on and on and on. And now from the uh, CNBC.com, it talks about uh, scary things are going on in Texas. And Texas is a key production area for wheat. So you're going to have to expect shortages of wheat because of this terrible, terrible drought. 
And then also it says here, crews are battling wildfire along the Arizona-Mexico border. What is going on? Notice what it says in Amos 4 and verse 7. Notice this prophecy because it is an end time prophecy. You can write for our Amos booklet and we'll prove that to you in, with profuse uh, number of scriptures that you can read for yourself uh, and see that this is all for the end time. Verse 7, and also God, here's God talking, I have withholden the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest, and I have caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So it's exactly what we're talking about, floods and drought. What is going on here? And is, is this something that you need to check into? Now, I know we can come up with all kinds of theories, say it's global warming or other something like that, but that is simply not provable at all. But this is provable, and this is coming to pass exactly as God said it would. I mean, would, would anybody out there uh, ever mention, well, hey, is this possible that this is fulfilled prophecy from the Bible? Do you ever hear a commentator ask that question? Well, no, they don't like to mention God. But they should, and before this is over, they're going to have to. God is going to get our attention one way or the other. So it's a, the one article here talks about wet or dry weather. Well, we're, they're losing uh, crops, wheat, and a lot of other crops. Let's go back to Matthew 24 and verse 7. I want to read that to you again. Matthew 24 and verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in different places. And, of course, we've just seen the one that, that is uh, the earthquake that has damaged uh, Japan beyond repair, it looks like. Oftentimes, verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, you see, you have the, these uh, pestilences following along after the, uh, the terrible weather. But also, we've had the same problems with tornadoes. What is happening there? Let me just give you a little bit of the news there, and, I, and if you'll bear with me. Because you need to understand this. This is not something that's just happening. It's not just a bad year. Jesus Christ prophesied that all of these events would come to pass. If we believe Christ, we have to believe we're on a countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And that is in your Bible in over a hundred prophecies. But how many really believe it? Well, here's the, the telegraph dot com from the UK and they say the storms were the deadliest since uh, talking about our storms here since 300 people were killed in 1974 when 148 tornadoes hit several states and authorities have warned that the death toll could rise further states of emergency were declared by the governors of Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi, Missouri, Oklahoma and Tennessee the governors called out the National Guard these are just for tornadoes can you explain what is happening? Well, God's Word does explain that. And you've read about Tuscaloosa being just a big part of the city, just wiped off the map. What is happening with the, with the weather? What is going on? I don't have time to, to get into any more of this, I think. But what, what, is, what is the problem? I, I'll keep a couple of those out and might read them if I have time. But let's notice Matthew 24 and verse 12. What is God so concerned about here? He says, And because iniquity, or it would better be translated lawlessness, because lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Well, it's just lawlessness all around us. And even those who do have the love of God just watch, watch it wax cold. And it wax cold and they get away from God and they're distracted by all of the, this lawlessness around us. And God is angry. It says in the Old Testament, He's full of wrath. Do you believe that? Now, look, you can change your life. And I can change mine, and we can get in sync with God. 
if we get rid of that all that lawlessness, we can certainly do that. Let me show you another scripture that might astound you when you think about it. Nahum 1, verses 3 and 4. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has His way in the whirlwind. That means tornado. God has His way in the tornado and in the storm. Can we conceive of God sending tornadoes and storms Himself? He has His way in that, He says, and uh, dries up all the rivers. And he talked, goes on and talks about the sins of the people, and that's why he does it. Let me read you another scripture here from uh, Hosea 2 and verse 8. For she did not know, this is an end time book also, for she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. Well, we don't really know that all of this wealth came from God. We don't even know that we're the birthright people talked about in our book on the United States and Britain and prophecy, and God just gave the greatest blessings ever on this land and on Britain that any nations have ever received in this entire history of man. And that is a fact. And these, you see, are only the beginning of sorrows. And he says he's going to take away his corn. Go ahead and read it in verses 9 through 11. God is going to take away his corn. Maybe we have time to read that. Therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof, and my wine in the season thereof, and will recover my wool and my flax, given to cover her nakedness. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of all her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of my hand. I will also cause all her mirth or joy to cease, her feast days and her moons and her Sabbaths and all her solemn feasts, all of them. Well, now you see we do have enemies and we consider them our lovers and act like they're just the greatest friends, but they haven't uh, historically been our friends. What does that all mean? What does it all mean? Well, listen, uh, we explain all of that in our literature. But remember this. Remember this. It's the beginning of sorrows. It's not the middle. It's not the end. It's the beginning of sorrows. But the most wonderful news you could possibly ever hear, ever will hear, and ever have heard is what happens at the end of those sorrows? At the end of those sorrows, Jesus Christ Himself is going to return and bring peace and joy and abundance to all this world, the whole earth that is prophesied in more than a hundred prophecies in your Bible. Now that's something we really must understand because the end of all of this is just pure, pure joy because Christ returns. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. For the free booklet offer, go to the phone, call the number on your screen, and ask for Why Natural Disasters. In this brand new booklet, you will see how the extreme weather conditions of today are actually a sign that we're drawing near to the return of Jesus Christ. As you learned on today's program, Jesus Christ listed many of these signs in Matthew 24, but most people choose to ignore them. Request the free booklet, Why Natural Disasters, and see the signs of the times in which we live. Just call the number on your screen and ask for the new booklet, Why Natural Disasters. If you go to the website right now at thetrumpetdaily.com, we'll also include some helpful information to supplement today's program so you can continue this study right now while it's fresh on your mind. All of our literature is free and will be sent to you with no cost or obligation. Just pick up the phone and make that free call or log on to thetrumpet.com. If you missed any part of today's program, remember that you can watch The Trumpet Daily in its entirety at thetrumpetdaily.com. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on Monday.